I'm Tom Malagany for Inside EVs. Today we're going to talk about charging the Mustang Mach-E. I'm standing here in front of a beautiful Grabber Blue 2021 Mustang Mach-E. We're going to go over how to charge this vehicle now. Charging electric vehicles really isn't all that complicated, but it is different. We're all well aware and quite used to filling up our gas or diesel cars. We've been doing it our whole lives. But for most people that buy or lease the Mustang Mach-E, it's probably going to be their first electric vehicle. So this is a totally new refueling process. We're going to take a look at how to charge the Mustang Mach-E at home, how to use public charging stations. We're even going to tell you how you can use Tesla destination chargers to charge the Mustang Mach-E. But first, don't forget, click the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on Inside EVs. We're gonna start off by talking about home charging your Mustang Mach-E. At home, you can charge at either a 120 volt outlet, that's a regular household outlet, or you can charge from a 240 volt source, either a plug or you would directly hardwire your charging equipment. Now, 240 volt source would be similar to what you have, say, for an electric range or an electric clothes dryer. It, it supplies extra power to electrical devices that require it. And in this case, uh, the Maki doesn't require to be charged from a 240 volt source, but you're going to want to, and we're gonna explain why. That's because the speed of how the car charges is going to depend greatly on how much power it gets. And a 240 volt source can charge your car a lot quicker because it will deliver a lot more power. We're gonna talk about how many miles per hour of range gets added on the different types of home charging that you can do. Now also remember, there's two battery packs for the Mustang Mach-E. Uh, the standard battery pack's about 76 kilowatt hours. Of that, you get to use about 68 kilowatt hours because you never get to use the entire battery pack. The manufacturers reserve a certain amount of the battery that they hold for uh, longevity. It's called a buffer, so that you don't completely deplete and completely charge the battery pack. If you do that, the battery doesn't last as long. So this is a safety feature, and Ford actually has been conservative with that. They allow a good-sized buffer, which should bode well for long life of your Mustang Mach-E battery. The extended range battery pack jumps up to 99 kilowatt hours. Of that, 88 kilowatt hours is usable. So we can't give you one answer on, well, how long does the car to charge take to charge because there's different size battery packs. But as I said, we're gonna go into that a little bit later. Ford supplies every Mach-E with a dual voltage mobile charger. All electric vehicles come with a charger. Some manufacturers provide better ones than others. Some of them only provide like a simple level one 120 volt uh, occasional use charger and uh, they kind of force their customers to go out and buy charging equipment because it will charge the vehicle very slow. But Ford didn't do that. Ford did a really good job and they supplied all Mustang Mach-E's with a dual voltage, 120 volt, 240 volt charger. That's pretty powerful. The way you switch between the volts is they give you these adapters that you unplug from the body of the charger, you plug them back in, and then you can plug them into the appropriate voltage outlet. We're gonna go over that really soon. Um, but the one thing you need to remember is um, the mobile charger for the Mustang Mach-E is a pretty robust unit. Many Mustang Mach-E owners are gonna find that that's gonna be all they need for daily charging. They just need to install an outlet that they can plug it into. So let's take a look at Ford's mobile charger now, and then you can decide if that's gonna be enough for you or if you wanna get something a little bit more robust or just something that you permanently mount in your garage so you can keep the mobile charger in the back of your car in case you ever need it on the road. That's something that some people like to do to have that comfort of knowing they've got that mobile charger with them if they ever come across an outlet and really need to plug in somewhere on the road. Okay, so 
Here's the mobile charger. Here's how it comes in a nice carrying case. Just wish it had like a Mustang emblem on here or even a Ford emblem. Come on, Ford, step it up a little bit. Um, we're proud we have uh, Mustang mach -E's. Want to show that off? Anyway, let's unzip it. We'll take the unit out. Okay. Okay. So what we have here is the main body of the unit. Here's the actual unit itself. It's got a nice long charging cable. I think it's 20 feet. It might even be 25 feet. It's a, it's a nice good length cable. Uh, your, your connector, that is labeled Ford here. And then we have this here, which is a cradle to hold this on the wall. You snap it on the back. Well, first what you would do is mount it to the wall. There's two screw holes here, and Ford even provides you with these two screws. So you'd mount it on the wall, um, either above or below your outlet, depending on how you have it set up. And then uh, this unit snaps into it, so it'll hold it, because you don't want the plug, uh, the, the plug carrying all the way to the unit. But let's get into that in a second. Um, so what we have here is this is where the adapters fit into here and Ford provides uh, you with the 120 volt adapter and the 240 volt adapter. Let's plug in the regular 120 volt adapter. Pop that in. It's nice and tight. And you see this would go into a regular household outlet like I have right here. You would plug it in. See it's, 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 it's lighting up. And you see how you wouldn't want it just dangling like that? You would want the cradle to be mounted on the wall so that you hold it. Now you could still pop it out and take it with you because the cradle will stay on the wall, um, but you don't want it just hanging like that and pulling on the outlet all the time. Not the best idea. So that's if you're charging 120 volts. Now, I mentioned before, well, that isn't there tight. I mentioned before that um, you probably want to charge at a faster pace. That's because on a level one charger, if you use this, you're going to get about three miles of range for every hour you charge. So let's say you're at home for 12 and a half, 13 hours, you know, by the time you get home from work to the time you leave the next day, you're only going to get about 40 miles of range. Now, some people might say, oh, wow, I only drive 20 miles a day. You know what? I know people that live with EVs and charge with 120 volts, a regular outlet, and they do it just fine. When they need to go on long trips or if they need to charge quicker, they go to like a, a public DC fast charger or something like that. So I don't want to totally discourage it. But I will tell you that most Mustang mach -E owners with this large battery, even the small battery is a big battery, you're probably going to want to charge with 240 volts because you're gonna get a lot more utility out of the car. It's gonna recharge that much quicker and you'll just be able to use it more. Um, so now here's the 240 volt outlet. This is called the NEMA 1450 plug. So if you've ordered your Mustang Mach-E and you think that you're gonna use this unit to charge it, you wanna have your electrician come and, and get you all ready, you want them to install a NEMA 1450 outlet like these guys are. It looks just like this, but you can't just say, give me a NEMA 1450 out. You have to specify if you want the ground up or the ground down. See this pin here? This is the ground pin, the round pin. So if you wanted to plug your charger in like this, which the way most people do now, of course, this will be dangling under here. Um, you would want to tell your electrician to install it with the ground up. Now, some people might not want that. Some people might want to mount the charger above their outlet. If that's the case, you want it ground down like this outlet is here, and then you would mount the charger up here. So it doesn't make any difference. It's fine both ways. But see, for instance, the way I have this electric piped in here, I couldn't really have it ground up because I wouldn't be able to mount the charger here. Uh, it wouldn't be long enough to, to, to reach, say, over to here. It would be bent badly. So if you want it mounted with the ground up, have your electrician pipe the supply in either to the side or from above the outlet. That way you could mount your cradle directly below it, plug it in, and you'll be fine. Now charging from uh, the 240 volt use with the NEMA 1450 plug, your electrician has to install this on a 50 amp circuit. 
That doesn't mean you'll be able to deliver 50 amps to the car um, uh, the, because circuits can only deliver at their maximum 80% uh, of what the maximum rating is. So a NEMA 1450 could deliver up to 40 amps to the vehicle. But in level two mode, when this is charging from uh, the, with the NEMA 1450 plug, this charger is limited to 32 amps. That's not bad. You'll get about 7.7 .7 kilowatts um, and uh, every hour delivered to the vehicle. Now we talked about the level one was three miles of range per hour. You get about 40 miles of range overnight. With this, you'll get about 21 miles of range per hour, seven times as fast as this guy. So overnight, if you're charged for, you know, 12, 13 hours, you'll get 250 miles of range. You'll almost in any circumstance be able to fully recharge your Mustang Mach-E, whether you have the small pack or the big pack. Because the thing is, you're not gonna roll into your garage every day on empty. Most people drive 30, 40, 50 miles a day. Let's say you drive 100 miles a day. Even if you charge with this, you come home after driving 100 miles, the car is going to be recharged in about five hours because you're going to get about 21 miles of range per hour with this. So you don't have to rush out and get the fastest charger uh, unless you drive crazy. You drive 300 miles every day and you, you want to be 100% charged every morning. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, the Mustang Mach-E can accept up to 11 kilowatts, which is great for an electric car. That's just about the fastest charging electric car on level two that's available today on a 240 volt source. So they rush out and they, they put in a 11 kilowatt, 48 amp charger, and they realize that, yeah, it charges quicker, but they really didn't need it because they're driving 40, 50, 60 miles a day. And this little guy here would have done the same thing. So you might want to save yourself some money and consider just using this as your daily charger. Uh, you know, I'm not saying don't go out and get uh, a faster charger, but I think it's prudent to use this first and see if it's okay. Uh, I think most people are gonna find that the portable charger that comes with the Mustang Mach-E is gonna be more than adequate for their daily charging needs. Even though Ford's mobile charger is probably good enough for most people, we realize that there's gonna be some people that want faster charging at home and the Mustang Mach-E can accommodate it. So some people are gonna to wanna to take advantage of that. Ford does offer the Ford Connect charger, which is a Wi-Fi connected charger that can deliver the full 11 kilowatts that the Mustang Mach-E can accept. It's not available just yet, or we would have had one here to do the demonstration, show you how the features work, but it's a Wi-Fi connected unit. It allows you to use an app to control the charging, view charging sessions and things like that. Um, once we get a hold of one, we're probably gonna do a full review of it soon. Um, but unfortunately, we couldn't grab it yet. Uh, but we wanna let you know, you don't need to buy Forge Charger. It's probably a very good option, but you can use any third party option, like the ones I have on the wall behind me. These are some very popular uh, electric car chargers available today. They all work just fine because they all use the same connector. All the EV chargers use the J1772 connector um, that every electric vehicle sold in North America uh, other than Tesla vehicles use. Uh, so any charger you buy can, char can just plug right into the Mustang Mach-E and charger without a problem. Now for Tesla, uh, chargers and I mentioned earlier they're going to show you that how you can charge a Mustang Mach-E on a Tesla wall connector or a Tesla destination charger that's a Tesla wall connector that I happen to have in the garage here here's the Tesla connector it's different than the J1772 but there are companies that sell adapters this is one of them made from a company called Tesla Tap you basically plug the connector in here and now this is like a J1772 well it is a J1772 so this will charge your Mustang Mach-E so if by some chance you already have a Tesla and now you bought a Mustang Mach-E you can use your wall connector if you have one to charge the Mustang Mach-E without a problem. There's really no, no issue at all with this. It's actually a decent choice because the Tesla wall connector can deliver the full 11 kilowatts that the Mustang Mach-E can accept. Now you will notice one thing though. 
This is directly piped into my electrical supply as opposed to these chargers here that all have plugs and they plug in like Ford's mobile connector. That's because if a charger is going to deliver more than 40 amps and the wall connector delivers 48 amps in order to deliver 11 kilowatts, it can no longer be plugged in. It has to be hardwired. And a lot of people don't like hardwiring their chargers because it removes the portability factor. You might have a, a, a vacation home, let's say down the shore or in the mountains. And if you have a, uh, a 1450 outlet installed, you could take your charger with you or use the mobile connector, the mobile charger, and just charge at your different locations. If the, if the charger's hardwired, it's there, it's permanent. Uh, and if it breaks and you need to say, send it back for a replacement under warranty, you need to get an electrician to come and disconnect it. The plug-in units are much easier to unplug and just remove. Now I mentioned the, the Ford's mobile charger delivers 32 amps, which is 7.7 .7 kilowatts. And the Ford um, Connect delivers 48 amps, which is a little over 11 kilowatts. So there's a, a difference there, 7.7 .7 kilowatts, 11 kilowatts. It's a good amount of, of, of difference. However, you could get a third-party charger like these behind me that deliver, say, 40 amps right in the middle, and that's 9.6 kilowatts. The difference between charging your Mustang Mach-E on a 9.6 kilowatt charger and the 11 kilowatt maximum it can take really isn't going to make that much of a difference. Um, and what I actually put together is a quick chart here where we're going to go over the different speeds of charging, how many miles per hour each charger will deliver for the Mustang Mach-E, and also how long it will take from zero to 100% to fully charge a Mustang Mach-E, whether it has the standard range battery pack or the extended range battery pack. So let's take a look at that now. If we're looking at the level one charging on 120 volt, um, 12 amp, that's using the Ford's mobile charger that comes with the car, you're gonna get about three miles of range per hour. Now, if you notice, that's going to take 95 hours to fully recharge the extended range battery pack and about 72 hours to recharge the standard range battery pack. Again, it works. It will charge your car. It's probably not something that most Mustang Mach-E owners are going to want to use on a daily basis. When you use the 240 volt adapter and charge at 32 amps with the same mobile charger, you jump all the way up to 21 miles per hour of range. It'll fully recharge the larger battery pack in about 14 and a half hours and the smaller battery pack in the Mustang Mach-E in 11 hours. If you were to get a 40 amp charger from a third party, level two, 240 volt, 40 amps, that's gonna deliver 9.6 kilowatts to the car. You'll get, you'll charge at a rate of about 25 miles per hour of range. You'll fully recharge the extended range battery pack in 12 hours, which is overnight and uh, about nine and a half hours for the standard range battery pack. If you use the Ford's connected charge station, which is a 48 amp level two, 240 volt charger, or the same power from a third party vendor, it doesn't matter which company you use, they all charge at the same rate. You're gonna get about 30 miles per hour of range delivered to the vehicle. You'll fully recharge in about 10 hours with the extended range battery pack, and in about eight hours with the standard range battery pack. But one thing we want to point out is these are estimates. Your charging time might be slightly faster, it might be slightly slower. Depends on the battery temperature, uh, if the thermal management system's working in the car, how much uh, losses are occurring during the charging session. So this is just a guideline, but it's pretty close to what you can expect when charging your Mustang Mach-E on these different levels of power. And finally, I'd like to address a question that we get a lot on Inside EVs. People ask us, should I charge my EV to 100%? There's no easy answer for that because every electric vehicle is different. Some manufacturers don't leave a large buffer, like we mentioned earlier with the Ford. The Mustang Mach-E leaves a very large buffer. The 99 kilowatt hour battery only gives you 88 kilowatt hour batteries. It holds 11 kilowatt hours to be this buffer to protect the battery. The standard range pack, that's 76 kilowatt hours, has a 68 kilowatt hour usable pack. So there you go, another eight kilowatt hours that's reserved that you can't touch. Ford was conservative with that and we think it's gonna bode well for longevity. So quite honestly, 
we wouldn't be concerned at all about charging your car to 100% on a daily basis. But we know some of you still are going to ask that question, how do I not charge to 100%? I don't wanna charge to 100%. There is a place in the vehicle settings that allow you to set a charge limit so that you won't charge past that. Now, it's location dependent. You can't just set the car to say, always charge to 90% and never um, exceed that doesn't work that way with the Mustang Mach-E. You have to select the destination. You could set your home as the address and then say, say 90%. It won't charge more than 90% when it's at home. But when you're on the road, it will continue to charge up until it's 100%. Um, and we think that's fairly smart to do because most people that are concerned about charging to 100% are really only concerned about it on a daily basis, which they do at home. When they're on their road, maybe going on a long road trip, charging 100% is fine. You probably prefer that, so you have that little extra range just in case. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is people ask us, well, I'm going away for a week or two. Should I leave the battery, the car plugged in? Do I charge it fully? What should we do? So leaving the car plugged in is not going to harm it. The only thing I can ever imagine having a problem with, and we've, I've never even heard this, but I know it's possible, if there's a severe lightning storm in the area while your car's plugged in. I would imagine that there could be a problem if the house gets struck or nearby the house gets struck. And that's a real edge case. So I wouldn't worry about it if I were you, but you really don't need to leave the vehicle plugged in. You know, the battery isn't gonna deplete as you're sitting there. It might drop a percent or two every day or two. Um, but if you leave the car charged at say 90% when you go away, you're away for a couple of weeks, it's gonna be fine when you come home. I mean, you'd have to leave for like, you know, eight months or a year for the battery to really get down to a critical level. And if that's the case, you know, I'm sure you'd make other arrangements to have somebody monitor the vehicle. Um, or at that point, maybe you do leave it plugged in and just roll the dice that there's no kind of electrical interference. Um, but you know, that's really not something that you should really be concerned about. If you're going away, personally, when I go away, I charge my EVs to about 90% and I leave them. When I come home a week or two later, they're like 87% the battery. It's not like uh, you know, you're gonna come home and it's gonna be critically low and you're gonna have a problem. So don't sweat that. Just um, charge it to 80, 90% and go have fun on your vacation. When you come home, your Mustang Mach-E will be just fine. So let's talk a little bit about public charging and the Mustang Mach-E now. Like home charging, there's basically two levels of charging when you're out in public. Uh, level two and DC fast charging, which sometimes is referred to as level three. Although that's not really the proper term, it's really DC fast charging. Um, you will also find on occasion level one charging in public, the regular 120 volt outlet, but it's kind of rare and that's really only in emergency situations. You typically don't wanna be plugging in public uh, charging at three miles of range per hour. But hey, if you find yourself really needing to, you'll take it rather than call a tow truck. Uh, but we're gonna focus on uh, public level two and DC fast charging now, because that's really the majority of what you're probably gonna encounter with your Mustang Mach-E. Now, DC fast charging is extremely fast. It's what enables long distance driving. And the Mustang Mach-E can charge from 10% to 80% in about 52 minutes. And that's with the larger extended range battery pack. The smaller pack will charge to 80% even quicker than that. That's the numbers that Ford gives. Now I personally have charged a Mustang Mach-E on a DC fast charger from 0% to 80% in 47 minutes. So I charged further and even quicker than what Ford promises. So I think there was a little under promising there by Ford so people don't get upset. But part of the reason why they did that is because with DC fast charging, it's a little bit more complicated than level one and level two. Level one and level two charging, when you plug in, basically the car is going to charge at the maximum rate for the whole time. Then at the very end, when it's about 95 to 98% charge, the charge rate slows down as the battery cells top off and kind of balance. With DC fast charge, it doesn't happen that way. The charging curve is not linear. Um, when basically, when you plug in, you get the maximum charge rate, uh, and then the, the charge rate 
constantly lowers and lowers and lowers as the state of charge increases you charge much slower so it's not always easy to say oh it's going to take this amount of time because there's D dc fast chargers with varying levels of power um, not all of them can deliver the 150 kilowatts that the mustang mach e can accept and DC fast charging is also very sensitive to, to temperature. If the battery is really cold, you won't get the full 150 kilowatts. So there's a lot of factors involved. So I understand why Ford said, you know, to safely say 10 to 80 percent, 52 minutes. In many instances, you're going to do a little bit better than that. In some instances, you're going to do worse. Um, you know, with DC fast charging, you also have to understand that um, you need to pay to charge. So, I mean, you're paying at home, but it comes through your electricity bill. Um, there's many different networks that are out there. There's EVgo, ChargePoint, Electrify America, Green Lots, Blink, plenty of DC fast charge networks. And typically, the way this has always worked is you have to sign up for these networks and get like an RFID card or get multiple apps. My phone has like 10 different apps for different charging networks if I need to charge in public. And what Ford did was something really unique. Um, they created the Ford Pass Charging Network, where they signed up with agreements with a whole bunch of these charging networks. Um, Electrify America, ChargePoint, EVgo, I think Green Lots, Blink, some Blink stations. And what they did was they aggregated it all into the Ford Pass app. So you can use your Ford Pass app to charge at any of these charging stations. You don't need to do what I've done in the past, have all these cards and different apps. Everywhere you pull up to a charging station, I gotta pull out an app and select it. Um, so Ford's really made charging the Mach-E in public really convenient through this, um, this app. Um, but one of the things I wanna make clear is Ford didn't install these charging stations. Um, they, they, the way it's kind of billed is that Ford Charging Network has 12,000 locations and 30,000 charging stations. It kind of makes it sound like Ford went out and installed all this infrastructure. They didn't. They're using existing infrastructure. But what they did was they made it very easy for you as a Mach-E owner to use it without having to sign up with all of these different networks. And I got to give them credit for that because I used it when I charged in a bunch of different charging stations this week. And it worked great. Another thing about DC fast chargers are they are not all created equal. There are some that can accept the full power the Mustang Mach-E can deliver, 150 kilowatts. But there are a lot of them that can't accept even near to that amount of power. So you have to make sure you know the power of the DC fast charger before you arrive. That's another thing that the uh, Ford Pass can help you out with. When you look at the, your app and you hit search for nearby charging stations, it's going to list all the charging stations in the area, DC fast chargers, level two chargers, and it also will tell you the power that they can deliver. So if you have a choice between two locations that are along your route and one can deliver more power, you probably want to select that location. Now, some DC fast chargers can only deliver 24 kilowatts. So I stopped off at one of those just to see how the Ford Pass app worked and how fast it charged the Mustang Mach-E. Uh, the Ford Pass app worked fantastic. It's on the charge point network. So I was just able to pull up, plug in, pull out my app, hit start charging session. It connected and started charging fine. Now that only delivers up to 24 kilowatts. So you'll only get about 75 miles of range per hour with the Mustang Mach-E. That's only about twice as fast as the Mustang Mach-E can charge on level two. So it's it's a DC kind of fast charger. Now, um, luckily, these aren't really set out along major corridors because they're not really meant for interstate travel. These are more for inner city travel um, and just, you know, to charge you up if you're driving another 80, 90 miles. It's not really meant to replenish a battery to allow you to just keep driving hundreds of miles and drive, you know, interstate or cross country. They're a little bit too slow for that, but they do have their purpose, these 24 kilowatt DC fast chargers. You'll also find there's a lot of 50 kilowatt DC fast chargers. And with those, you'll get somewhere around 140 to 150 miles of range per hour of charging the Mustang Mach-E. Again, 
not fantastic, but good enough to get you to where you're going. What you really want to try to find are the 150 kilowatt DC fast chargers because they can deliver the maximum power that the Mustang Mach-E can accept, at least for a short period of time before it starts ramping down. But it still will allow you to charge as fast as you possibly can. Now, the Electrify America network in particular has all 150 kilowatt DC fast chargers. They're called ultra fast DC fast chargers. Some of the other networks are starting to roll them out now, EVgo, ChargePoint, but they don't have too many of them. Most of those networks have 50 or 24 kilowatt DC fast chargers. Uh, but the Electrify America network, all of their locations have 150 plus DC fast chargers. And the good news is Ford is giving you 500 kilowatt hours of free charging on the Electrify America DC fast charge network with the Mustang Mach-E. That's good for around 1500 miles of driving. That's not bad. So you definitely want to make sure you take advantage of that and use your 500 free kilowatt hours of charging. And there's another thing that you get with the Electrify America network that you don't get with any of the other networks. It's a brand new technology called plug-in charge. With plug-in charge technology, you just pull up to the charging station, grab the connector, and plug in. Now the car will communicate with the charging station and initiate the charging session. There's no need to use an RFID card, an app, your Ford Pass, anything like that. It'll just automatically bill your pre-established account. Now, currently, only the Electrify America network is plug-in charge capable, but the other networks are already developing the technology and will be implementing it rather soon. That's a huge advantage for the Mustang Mach-E when charging on the Electrify America network. It's so simple. You plug in and walk away and you're done. Currently, only the Mustang Mach-E and the Porsche Taycan are plug-in charge capable. So the Mach-E is in good company. A couple more things I'd like to mention about public charging. Number one, when you're using a DC fast charger, you really don't want to charge past 80%. That's because the Mustang Mach-E's charge rate drops precipitously. Uh, once you're at 80% state of charge, you're only going to get about 12 kilowatts of power. I mean, that's like level two charging. So unless you need the extra miles, you really need them, you want to unplug when you get to 80% if you're using a DC fast charger. Ford actually recommends not charging past 80%, not because it's going to harm the vehicle at all, but just because it becomes so slow at that point, you don't want to do it unless you have to. It will actually take you twice as long to charge the Mustang Mach-E from 80% to 100% than it does to charge you from 0% to 80%. Think about that. Twice as long to go 20% than it does to charge 80%. So like I said, if you don't need those extra miles, you, re you really don't want to waste your time there. Once you're unplugged at 80%, you've got a ton of range on the car anyway. Unless you really need it, you don't want to really stick around at that point. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is with um, public level, level two charging. Uh, like DC fast charging, uh, these are controlled by networks and there's a bunch of networks out there that use them and you typically need your RFID cards or apps, but you can, you can activate those with the Ford Pass charging network app just the same. You pull up, you plug in, you uh, swipe your app to initiate a charging se session and you're good to go. Now I will mention that some of these chargers, the connector is locked to the charger. So what you have to do is actually activate the charging session first, and then it releases the connector and you plug it in. DC fast chargers, the connector is never tethered or locked to the station. With DC fast chargers, you typically have to plug it in first before you initiate a charging session. It works the opposite with level two in many cases. You have to typically initiate the charging session, then it unlocks the connector and you plug it in. Uh, with level two charging, most public charging stations are limited to about six kilowatts. So even though the Mustang Mach-E can charge at a faster rate, 
it's hard to find those in public. In most instances, you're gonna get about six kilowatts, which is, it's gonna charge slowly, but you know, you, you have to use the, the right tool for the right job. There's instances where public level two charging works and you use it for that. You definitely wouldn't wanna use it for long distance travel to replenish on a drive where you're driving hundreds and hundreds of miles uh, because it's gonna take really long in order to replenish the battery. Also, in addition to using the Ford Pass app to locate charging stations, the in-car navigation does a great job of it also. Um, you can either type in your location or use the voice control, and it'll give you a list of public charging stations, and you just tap the one you wanna go to, and it will navigate you to those charging stations. When you plug in the Mustang Mach-E, you'll notice there's a little blue ring on the side of the connector. It has five different segments. Each segment represents 20% state of charge. As you can see, this last segment is blinking. That tells you that the vehicle is more than 80% charged. And once the vehicle completes charging, this will turn solid blue. So let's go over two more features that the Mustang Mach-E has, scheduled charging and also preconditioning. I'm gonna tap the car icon, go into settings, then charge. You can see we have two preferences here, charge scheduling and departure and comfort. For charge scheduling, that's going to set the car to only charge during a specific window. Uh, that's really specifically for people that have time of use electricity plans. You can save a lot of money by charging your Mach-E during off peak hours. It's usually between midnight and say 6 a.m. Uh, so that's what we have the schedule set up for here on week, weekdays. It'll charge between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. You could also set uh, second uh, schedules also if if you need that for any reason one thing you have to understand this is location based this will only do it for the location you set which we have it set to do it at home typically when we're out on the road we don't need to follow the the, the time of use plans as much but some people will need to do that um, now let's go and take a look at departure and comfort this is for preconditioning um, particularly in the winter and in the, the summer, you might wanna have the cabin warmed up or, or cooled down before you leave in the morning and when you, when you leave work. Uh, if the vehicle's plugged in, say in the morning, you'll have a nice warm cabin, the car will be all warmed up and you'll still be 100% charged. That'll really help extend your range in the winter months. Um, what you do with this here is you set up a schedule. I have it set up already on weekdays, uh, well, just on Monday, you set it for each day uh, to have to be all pre-warmed at 7 a.m. Now, let's say I want the cabin to be nice and warm when I leave work. You could set up a second uh, schedule here. We're gonna go to five o'clock at night, and there you go. I want it warm, so I'll drag up to the warm and save. So now, the car's gonna precondition on Monday at 7 a.m. I'll hop it in the morning. It'll be nice and warm, 100% charged. Now at five o'clock, it's gonna warm itself up for me at five o'clock, but chances are while I'm at work, I'm not gonna be plugged in. So that's gonna use a decent amount of your battery. Uh, if you're concerned with the range, you might not wanna precondition if you're not plugged in. Uh, but if you have plenty of range and you just want the car to be nice and warm when you get in it, feel free to use the preconditioning feature. And as you can see here, you can set it up for every day of the week. You might only set up the mornings during the weekdays if you only work on the weekdays. Um, but, you know, hey, you can set up whatever days you want on that. So that's it for the Mustang Mach-E. And uh, we hope you learn stuff here with our charging video. Uh, please Feel free to leave any comments in the section below. We'll try to answer any questions if we missed something. Uh, if you have any other questions about charging the Mustang Mach-E, leave them in the comment section below. We'll do our best to answer them as best we can. Thanks for watching.